In the headlines, DAIC endorses government's ban on single-use plastic and styrofoam food packaging material due to take effect on Tuesday. Local Economist says a vibrant construction sector is a key component in Dominica's economic growth. And two Carnival Queen contestants promote male empowerment and youth involvement in regional integration. I am Andrea Louis with the Channel 5 News. Back with the details after this. Get ready to open the best gifts with Flow this Christmas. Sign up for a new broadband or TV service with free installation. Or sign up for a broadband and TV bundle and get 40% off broadband for the first two months. Plus, get a chance to win a 55-inch smart TV, one year or six months of free service. Enjoy big time entertainment and big speeds this Christmas with Flow. Terms and conditions apply. Visit discoverflow.co for more. Imagine, you have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Thank you for staying with us. First up, no confirmation from police at this point, but there were reports on Monday afternoon of a shooting in Tetmon which left one man dead. It is reported that the man in question was shot after he allegedly attacked the police. Unconfirmed reports also indicate that one police officer was stabbed in connection with that incident in Tetmon. In more police news, escaped prisoner Ezron Rock John Baptist of Rivia Sirik is back in police custody. John Baptist, who escaped from custody while on the Alford Ward of the Princess Margaret Hospital, has been apprehended. John Baptist, who escaped from custody while on the Alford Ward of the Princess Margaret Hospital, has been apprehended. John Baptist, 29, was on remand at the Dominica State Prison when he was taken to the PMH for medical attention on 29th December 2018. It was there that he escaped. He was apprehended on Saturday while traveling at the rear of a garbage truck. In other top stories, the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, DAIC, has thrown its full support behind the ban of single-use plastic and food packaging material. Julian Morris has that story. The ban comes into effect Tuesday, January 1, and will see food establishments using biodegradable products to package food and drink for consumption. Executive Director of the DAIC, Lizra Fabian, says the ban on food packaging, plastics and styrofoam will create opportunities for the local business sector. We also think that it will create opportunities for businesses in, in sourcing alternatives which would which would help our environment. We really believe that in terms of how we dispose of our waste and the use of plastics, it can be harmful to our environment and it is harmful to our environment in many ways. So for our business community, there will be opportunities for sourcing, but also opportunities for creating alternatives to the traditional um, plastics that we use. So if anyone sees that there's an opportunity to create, if it's um, um, takeaway containers using bamboo or, or some other some other material. It's it's really open to anyone who desire to go into that field if they see the opportunity, and I think it would it would not just be useful for Dominica, but if it can service the OECS, that would also be a great opportunity. Earlier this month, government announced there would be a six month phase out period for the distribution and use of non biodegradable food packaging material, which will run from the first of January to the thirtieth of June, twenty nineteen. It was also announced that the government would approve or had approved the application of 0% duty on the importation of alternative biodegradable products, namely lids, cups, single-use containers, cutlery and drinking straws. There will also be a 0% duty on the importation of reusable shopping bags. 
Fabian says one of the concerns of the business community was the cost involved in moving to biodegradable food packaging items. So I've not received feedback from businesses in terms of not being happy about the move because everyone supports that we need to ensure that our environment is, that we protect our environment and we use or dispose of our products in a, a very good way. Um, the pricing is, is extremely expensive. It's, it's much more expensive than, than the current plastic and, and styrofoam that we use um, but I believe all businesses are looking for the best prices and the best alternatives so that the general public will pay the best possible pricing. Um, we're also working with the ministry to ensure that our concerns um, in terms of the implementation of the ban on plastics um, will be will will work in a way that helps the general public as well as business processes. The DAIC's executive director is happy to report that some local entities have already taken on creative measures to help with phasing out of the plastic shopping bags. So we're also encouraging our businesses that they they find ways of, of changing it over. I saw an example of a business um, this week who gave me a 10% discount if I didn't come with a plastic. So I got a 10% discount on what I purchased. So these are, are creative ways that all businesses are using to ensure that there's a, a good phase of process with the ban on plastics. The decision for the country to move to biodegradable food packaging material was announced by Prime Minister Skerritt in his but it address this year. In other developments, local economist McCarthy Marie says a lot of the economic growth projected for Dominica centers around the explosion in the construction industry in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Here again is Julian Morris. In our December 24 newscast, we reported that according to the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC, Dominica was leading economic growth in the region with a 9% expansion. Dominica is followed by the Dominican Republic at 5.7%, Panama 5.6%, Antigua and Barbuda 4.7%, and Guyana 4.6%. Because Dominica was knocked down by the hurricane badly, yes? All the activity to rebuild the economy is what I'm actually talking about. So the, the growth is relative to last year. We will have more activity going on. And most of it center will center around construction to start with. That will be the core. It will spread out to wholesale and retail. The whole building and rebuilding and repairing thing goes on for a bit of a while. Then when because right now Dominica almost have a, a shortage of labor for everything. All over the place you see signs help wanted. And the signs in there so long. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because people have money they're spending, insurance money has come in from abroad, basically to repair all these damage that happen, private and public damage. Like the creed, for example, didn't exist. It's, it's this year it's going to really be in existence. Yeah. So all the people who are employed with the creed, will be employed basically in 2019. Um, and then whatever work they undergo, but like up where I'm living here, they had that work working on rebuilding the road. In the, in the, to come up to Coptal, in rebuilding the road. So all of that is economic activity that's going on, that's concrete. ECLAC has predicted Caribbean economies will grow 2.1% in 2019, but the organization also predicts global economic uncertainties in the same year, with a weakening of international trade aggravated by trade tensions between the U.S. and China. Still with the country's economy, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank is projecting economic growth of 7.61% for Dominica in 2019. The ECCB projections for 2019 also include Anguilla 5.39% of GDP, Grenada 4.11% and St. Kitts and Nevis 4.16%. Meantime, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank is projecting 7.61% economic growth for Dominica in 2020. Antigua and Barbuda is expected to record 3.76%, while St. Kitts and Nevis realized 3.42% growth. 
St. Lucia will see a 3.14% projected GDP growth. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. Stay connected and share your favorite holiday moments with Flo. Get the Alcatel A1 for $199 when you activate an extra-large prepaid combo plan or the Samsung J4 for just $399 with a large postpay plan and get free talk evenings and weekends. Plus, get free WhatsApp on large and extra-large prepaid combo plans and sign up for any new service for a chance to win cash or hampers every week. So make it Flo for everything mobile this Christmas. Terms and conditions apply. Visit discoverflow.co for more. Imagine you have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Welcome back. Letting the voice of the youth be heard in the call for regional integration is what contestant number four intends to execute as a platform. 20-year-old Marisol John will be representing the communities of Sultan and Coptal in the Miss Dominica pageant. John says her platform, Regional Integration, the voice of the youth today for integration tomorrow, was influenced by her family. Being in a home nothing short of diversity, definitely influenced my platform selection. My mom, a Dominican, father, Grenadian, and my brother, a Cuban, and of course, me, Dominican to the core. We all had our differences, but we all carried the same last name and had one thing that always kept us together, love. So too, though very different, each independent island is similar and we share the same surname. West Indian. Regional integration is a process by which neighboring nations become interconnected with the aim of achieving communal benefits, primarily by accelerating economic growth. The Queen contestant urged the young people to play their part in helping along regional integration, despite what may seem like a very long and at times failing process. This ideology has been discussed for decades. Yet, the implementations of these discussions have fallen short, and one may say even failed us as a region. While we do have love and unity throughout the region, we must remember that it's not only after one of us suffers a natural disaster that we should be united. My fellow young people, we are the future, and we are responsible for realizing the dream of becoming one Caribbean, where everyone succeed and our su where everyone succeeds and our success benefits all. Member of Parliament for the Roseau Valley constituency, Dr. Colin McIntyre, commended the five contestants for taking part in the show and encouraged them to rely on each other during their journey. It's not easy at all. <clears throat> I find you all are very brave, to be honest with you. I mean, I have learned and I've gotten accustomed to speaking on the podium now, so it's not a big deal again. In the beginning, it was a little tight. But I, I, I think you're in for something very serious. I'm not sure if I could handle that one. But I want to urge you all to give it your best shot. Give it your best shot. Maintain friendship during the program because you're going to need each other. Sometimes there are little ups and downs, little this and what. I wouldn't call them mistakes, but you know what I'm talking about. Because we tend to get a little nervous sometimes. It's natural, we're human beings. But what I want to say to you is you should rely on each each one of you should rely on each other for the support that's needed to run this program. In general, I support everyone here, but in particular, Marisol John, because she's from the Roseau Valley, of course she's my queen. Marisol John was also officially sashed by her sponsor, D Treads Tires Inc., at her village launching over the weekend. And 19-year-old Campbell resident vying for the title of Miss Dominica 2019 hopes to inspire young men to become better role models in society. Alia Martin will take to the stage as contestant number one on the night of 1st March 2019. During her village launching over the weekend, she revealed her platform, which focuses on empowering males in the country. My goal is to excel through this entire process but more importantly, to use this platform to bring awareness for the enrichment of the men of Dominica. 
so they can be useful contributions to themselves, their families, communities, and overall positive role models. My passion and belief on the issue, on the issue has been transformed into the acronym MAIL, which stands for Men Achieving Leadership Excellence. Alia believes through proper education, young men can be better positioned to contribute positively towards the development of the country. It is critical that education be at the forefront of this venture. One cannot expect life to be secured if the right tools to do so are not utilized. Also, the importance of an honest day's work for an honest pay should be something that is revered. We as a nation need to deter young men from falling prey to gangs, to gang violence, and the abuse of drugs such as alcohol and hallucinogenic like cocaine. Lastly, a sense of respect for self and others need to be brought back into effect. Only through this can our young men develop into upstanding citizens. Member of Parliament for the Maho constituency within which Campbell Falls endorsed Alia's participation in next year's Queen Show and encouraged each contestant to put her best foot forward on the night of the show. So whoever does the best on the night of the show will win. Because I want to say to you again, more importantly, that you can look nice, you can dress nice, you can talk well, but what really matters is the night of the competition. So do your best on the night of the competition. I don't go to Queen Shows, but I always follow the Queen Shows, and I support any time. Any young lady from my constituency runs, I will put 110% to assist you. That is my role as a parent, because I want us to be the best. See, I want to have the best shoes, the best dress, the best hairdo, the best everything. Right? So, look out for the young lady from Campbell. The launching of Alia Martin marks the end of the village launchings for the Queen contestants. To end the news, the headlines again. The DAIC endorses government's ban on single-use plastic and styrofoam food packaging material due to take effect on Tuesday. Local Economist says a vibrant construction sector is a key component of Dominica's economic growth. And the two Carnival Queen contestants promote male empowerment and youth involvement in regional integration. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Lee. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for your support in 2018. We wish you God's continued blessings for a safe, peaceful and prosperous 2019.